that you did not know about the importance of human touch. And right after that, we're going to talk about people who uh, are professional huggers or professional cuddlers. And that's actually a thing. And you, you, get, you can get a job just hugging strangers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me one thing you did not know about the importance of touch. Who wants to be volunteer before I start naming names? Okay, Adrian, let's hear from you. Uh, the question is? <laughs> One thing you learned from the video about the importance of human touch. I mean, it just says that we are really social creatures and that it really helps our development as children into adulthood because it reassures us and gives us more confidence. Yeah, Anna? Um, I never knew um, the fact of uh, someone can be recovered, you know, for any sake, and it's very interesting. I never knew that. And Layali. I think that the one that says that uh, touch decrease, decrease stress. Yeah. Okay, so there is a lot of power in touch or a hug. And the interesting thing is that, you know, and that's one of the reasons why so many people, especially those who live, who have a certain age and they live all by themselves, they go to the doctor like for every, any foolishness. It's just because they want to be touched. Now, there are prof professional huggers or professional cuddlers, and there are actually places, if you don't have anybody to hug you at home, you can go to these places and get cuddled. And I watched a video about that, but it was kind of long, so I'm not going to show you. You can Google this. And in these places, they have like, you can either have chairs or beds, and it's not sexual. You just go there and you pay somebody, and that person is going to hug you and play with your hair and rub you on for like, I don't know, like one hour, and then you get up and you go home. So if any of you ever need a job, that might be something you wanna look into. Of course, it can be a little dangerous, but um, before they do that, they actually have to sign an agreement that it's not sexual, and the person is not trying to have sex with you. It's just a service that they're providing, which is to cuddle you. Some people don't want to be cuddled, there was this guy who said he just wanted somebody to sit beside him on the bed and talk. So this person that he hired, this lady, she sat beside him on the bed and they talked for one hour. And there was also this person who only wanted somebody to hold his hand. And this lady, he preferred a female and this lady sat there and held his hand. Well, there was this other girl who wanted somebody to play with her hair. So she put her head on the person's lap and the person played with her hair for one hour. So there you have it. So this whole thing about touching is extremely important. So what do you think happens based on what you saw in the video and based on your own experience, what do you think happens when a little uh, baby does not get hugged or kissed or touched? What do you think would happen to a baby when he grows up like that? And I'm picking on Mary Romero. I think that the baby will grow up with issues. Mm -hmm. What kind of issues? What kind of issues? Lack of love. Um, in, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they will have problems um, expressing himself and giving love to other people because he didn't he didn't receive love when they was a baby they was a baby. Yeah. You know, a lot of people who used to come to my clinic when it was there, they would always tell me that you know they have and most of them had kids with problems, right? Kids who were extremely angry. And a lot of them would tell me, oh when I was a little child, nobody hugged me and I'm okay. No, you're not okay. Your kid has anger issues. And, you know, a lot of people use that as an excuse. 
if you did not receive a lot of hugs as a child, that's not an excuse for you to do that to your child. Because we need to reach to a certain age in which we start deciding what type of person we're gonna be. So we find that it's like a cycle. I didn't, nobody hugged me, so I'm not gonna hug my child. And then my child grows up with anger issues and probably does the exact same thing. Okay, so this whole thing about hugging and touching is one of the reasons why you touch your friends, you hug your friends, you hug your parents, you hug your grandparents. It's not just out of habit, it's because there's a deep desire inside of humans to be hugged. Why? Why does that desire exist? Who wants to tell me why do we have this desire to hug and be hugged by people we love, not random people, people we love? Because this whole thing about going to a place for them to hug me, that wouldn't work for me. I don't like, no. But why do we have this desire to be hugged and touched by the people that we love? Let's see, who wants to take that? Mary Foster, talk to me. Maybe because of how we feel by doing it, then that's it. Because I was reading an, art an article that says, why do we kiss or why people kiss? And they were like actually explaining that when we were born, that we were born, um, we actually have to be very near to our mom and that we like have to literally eat with our moms. And that constantly touch on, on our mouths, maybe it's the reason why we kiss. And there were a lot of reasons, but I don't know. I think maybe it's the way we, we feel and we feel around that person being near. Okay. So what exactly do we feel when we hug people, Diane? What do we feel when we hug people? Teacher, I don't hug people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Imagine you're a little child. I'm sure you hugged your parents when you were a little child. How did it make you feel when your parents hugged you? I don't remember. I will say with my brothers because I don't remember. I, well, I feel like I am protective towards them because they all are minor than me. So I kind of like that feeling that they feel safe with me. Okay. Anna, talk to me. Why do we hug? Um, How do we feel? The, the, well, the same as her, I don't like to hug people. If it makes me feel so uncomfortable for some reason. I don't like to, to hug anybody. But if I think if I was a child and I want to, you know, um, hug anybody, I think it's because um, maybe because uh, that person will feel like a, when you hug that person will feel like safe, like a safe place. Mm -hmm. And it make me feel they make me feel like happy and all right that somebody care about that that person. Yeah. What about you, Eduardo? What's the importance? What's the big idea of hugging people? I feel it's to share love. Okay. I like hugging sometimes. Well, I, I hug a lot, oh. and I feel it's, it's good. I, I like it. I don't have, like, a definition. It's just a feeling. Like, when you hug, I smile, people smile. That's why we hug. Okay. We feel heart beating. Hmm? Oh, okay. You went romantic there. Thank you. I, I don't like to hug random people. I don't know. But I do, I'm a hugger. I hug everybody in my house at least once a day. And everybody's getting kisses and hugs before I go to sleep. Because I go to sleep before everybody. So I don't care what you're doing or where you're at. You're getting kisses and hugs. And sometimes I forget that I already gave you kisses and hugs. And you get it again. But that's only with my family. I'm not going to be hugging people randomly on the streets. I don't hug my friends either. So I can completely understand eh, eh, Diane and Anna. I don't hug my friends it's uncomfortable but I do love to hug the people who came out of me the thing is this uh for uh for a small child and some of you mentioned it being hugged makes you feel safe and that's extremely important when you're a little child little kids need to feel safe so if you grow up in an environment in which you did not feel safe there's going to be consequences to that 
And it's, of course, there are gonna be negative consequences. So that's one of the 10 reasons. And maybe at the end of the book, we're gonna go through 10 reasons why Fidel's became a prostitute. Because that's one of the 10 reasons. She was never hugged as a child, so she never felt safe. And when she was touched in a sexual way, she just was so happy to be touched. She did not identify the danger of it. So right now you should be up to the part where she's graduating from high school, hopefully. And uh, when she went to get her diploma, her certificate, they had this system in, that, in Egypt in which somebody had to be there to receive the certificate with you. So at her graduation, there was absolutely nobody there. That's where you should be right now. Nobody was there to receive her certificate. And so a teacher with which she had connected in a really weird way before was the one who had to accept the certificate for her. Now think about your graduation, whether it's the upcoming 12th grade graduation or whatever. How would you feel if absolutely nobody in your family showed up to your graduation? Now, People, graduations are not as big a deal as we think they are, okay? They're not. And you're going to figure that out after you leave high school. So right now, most of you, not, well, yeah, about half of you in this group or a little less are have your upcoming 12th grade graduation, and it's a big deal for you, yes. But then when you're finished, you're like, oh, there's the college graduation, bigger deal, and so on. But that's a whole different topic. How will you feel... If, you, if COVID didn't exist and there was this huge graduation ceremony and nobody in your family showed up, how would that make you feel? Let's see, who wants to answer Depressed. this? Depressed. Depressed, yeah, what else? The first thing that you will do, because that's the thing that I, I will do if that is the case, uh, is to leave. Uh, give me mm -hmm. my, my certificate, my diploma, and I'm going to my home or something like that. Maybe to my home, but I'm going to be like very sad. I'm not going to talk to anybody mm. in my house. And I'm <laughs> going to like lock, lock my bedroom, my room and be all the night in that thinking, <laughs> why didn't they come? Yeah. Yeah. And, and what about this? Uh, what is the deep feeling there? I think that I will be disappointed. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Disappointed. And it's like you actually want these people to give you support. So, all the things that happened in Firdaus's life led up to that moment where all the other students are with their family, receiving their certificates. And when they call her name, there's nobody there. Imagine that. So imagine how it would make you feel like, wow, I am definitely all alone. And even though the teacher came and rescued the situation, that was a teacher. That was not her family. So the feeling was not the same. And so that could be, we could add to the list of reason number two why Fidel's became a prostitute. She had no support. Now, another interesting thing is that she had dreams of things that she wanted to become in her life. But because of the culture, and those of you who did the research about um, the differences and um, the gender differences on people, the internet at my home is kind of crazy. So if I disappear, I will return. So anyway, those of you who did the whole research about the gender inequality in Egypt, you will understand that she could have had biggest dreams on earth and it would have been extremely difficult for her to be able to fulfill those dreams. And that brings me to topic number two. Now the first topic, the importance of touch and how it can mess you up if you don't get the right amount of touch, a healthy positive touch from childhood. Topic number two, it has been discovered that one of the main reasons of depression is not fulfilling your heart's desires. Not fulfilling your heart's desires is one of the main reasons of depression. Let's talk about that. What does this mean? Not fulfilling your heart's desires. What are we talking about? And what does that have to do with depression? And let me pick on 
Moises, are you finished having breakfast? Talk to us. Could you repeat the question, please? It has been discovered that one of the biggest causes of depression is not fulfilling your heart's desires. What does depression have to do with your heart's desires? Why, why, why would you be depressed if you didn't fulfill your heart's desires? From your perspective. Maybe your desires are what makes you feel complete. And so if you don't <clears throat> accomplish anything that you want to accomplish, like for example, if you want to study a certain profession, but it's not possible, you cannot, you have to study something else, you might get depressed or sad because, well, you are not doing what you really want to do and you were forced into something else. And so I think that could be really sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And so a lot of times, um, okay, but first of all, let's define depression. A lot of times people think depression is just that you're sad. Depression is a lot more than just sadness. It has a lot of anger in it and a lot of disappointment in it. And all of that anger and that disappointment is from you to you. Okay, it's not about other people. It's you're angry and disappointed with yourself. So those are some of the main components of depression. So think about it. If from a child, I wanted to become an airline pilot and stuff happened and my parents said it was too expensive and they told me I should become a architect instead of an airline pilot like I wanted, I might be okay with that for a while, but then that deep desire is gonna come back and it's gonna show up and I'm gonna start feeling depression. And sadly, this is what happens to a lot of adults. For many different reasons, we would spend a whole year, day here trying to figure it out. But for a lot of reasons, uh, parents, and that's one of the reasons why I keep telling you, make sure you get to do the thing that you want to do. Because for a lot of reasons, parents think that they know what's best for their kids. Sometimes they do, but when it comes to choosing your future, or choosing your career, the only person who knows what's best for you is you, because you are the one with the deep desire. So we find a lot of people, and I will never forget the case of a young boy some years ago. He wanted to work as um, this, these people that create escenografias. And that's actually a career that you can study at the National University. And that's what he wanted, that was his dream. From the time I met him when he was a little boy, that was always his dream. He wanted to be one of these, whatever you call that people who design um, sets. But when he got to 12th grade, his mother said, eso no da plata, you know, the usual. Mejor estudia medicina. And he didn't want to do it. And he actually texted me and he said, I don't want to be a doctor. That's not what I want. But mama said the medicine. So he went into medicine. And he's about to, I think he graduated last year. He would graduate this year. And he seems to be okay with it now. But what's going to happen to him in five, 10 years? He's going to start thinking about, because that's how the mind works. He's going to go back to start thinking about, wow, I really wanted to design sets. I, that's, that was my deep desire. And I'm here being a doctor just because mama said she needed it to be something that was more prestigious and to give more money. And he is running the risk of falling into depression because I have seen it over and over and over again. I have spoken to people, but once I had this guy, uh, he was brought to me by his kids. He was in his seventies and he was severely depressed. And while talking to him, I kind of asked him, what did you want to be when you were a kid? And he said, I wanted to be an architect, but my parents said it was too expensive and they made me go to La Normal de Santiago and become a teacher. And so he had become a teacher his whole life. He had taught for 20, 30 years, I don't know, but it wasn't his heart's deep desire. So ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, this thing about getting to fulfill your heart's desire is not just 
mala crianza or eh, impulso or whatever they want to tell you it is, your mental health actually depends on it. So Firdaus had huge dreams of what she wanted to become, but because of the lack of opportunities in her country and because she did not have a family to support her, she went in a completely different direction. At the end of her life, it's very obvious because that's what we saw in chapter one, that even though she looked strong and everything else, she was deeply depressed. And of course, some of her depression came from all the bad things that happened to her, of course. But part of her depression also came because of the fact that she was never able to fulfill her heart's desire. And how do we know this? Because she mentions it in the story. If something affects you, you're going to mention it. If, you, if it doesn't really bother you, you're just going to forget about it and ignore it. So my question to you is this, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, kings and queens, what can you do to uh, not fall into this um, depression when you become an adult? Because it's not going to hit you now. It usually hits starting around age 40, 50. Why do I have people in the waiting room? Oh, oh, okay. It's gonna hit you around age 40, age 50. And that's one of the reasons why if you look around, there are a lot of adults in those ages who are amargadísimo a matar. And it's basically the depression that they feel because they were unable to fulfill their heart's desires. So what do you think you can do to not become another one of those statistics? What can you do to not become one of those statistics of adults who hate their lives and make everybody's life miserable because they were not able to fulfill their heart's desire? Who wants to answer that or should I start naming names? Who hasn't spoken? All of you have spoken, well, that's nice. Isabella, you wanna answer the question? You want me to repeat the question? Yes. We're talking about when you don't get, when you don't fulfill your heart's desires or you don't become what you dreamed of becoming when you were a kid, as an adult, you're gonna run the risk of falling into depression because it has been discovered that one of the major causes of this depression is not fulfilling your heart's desires or not getting to do the things that you really love to do. Not just malacrianza, like, quiero ir a esa fiesta. No, but the deeper things that you want, okay? So what can you do as teenagers this age to not become one of those amargado adults who did not fulfill their heart's desire and uh, then it's too late for them because when you're 50 and your heart's desire was to be an architect, it's kind of late to go study that. What can you as teenagers do to not fall into that cycle? Well, maybe you can find a way that you do what you dream, but also like, have also the, the possibility of having a work or maybe studying the, the career that might get you to the, to the, to what you want. Okay. Who else? That's good advice. Who else? Before I name names. You might have to disobey. You might have to what? Disobey. Okay. I, really mm -hmm. I discovered that he, in those cases. That's it? <laughs> okay. That was abrupt, but yes, <laughs> you might have to disobey. <laughs> Who else? 
I think it's gonna be really hard to follow what you really want to do because um, not a lot of people are gonna support you if what you wanna do is something like, um, like weird or outlandish, you know? If you wanna be a movie director, people are gonna be like, seriously, in Panama, that's never gonna pay. You're not gonna have any money, you're gonna die. And if you really wanna do that, you have to suffer through it and you have to consider if it's really worth it. And if you're willing to go through the pain to get anywhere because it is very likely that you will actually have to spend a lot of time without enough money and well you you will need support from other people but you won't have it mm. and so you're gonna have to like um decide if you really want to do that or if maybe something you could be you could be um passionate towards other things instead of that and so yeah I think it's a lot of suffering to get your dreams. <laughs> okay. Mary? Like, yeah, that's true what Moses said. Because when I said, like, to my parents, like, hey, uh, maybe I could be an actress or maybe I could be a movie director or whatever at, at that moment I want to. They always said, like, yeah, but the first, uh, it's better if you study something else before trying to be a movie director. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that, like to try to study something else before what I want to do. And it's just like, I don't know. Yeah, because it's like wasting time. Yeah. Mandisa. I think being rebellious um, every time you get the chance. For example, I don't, I don't have that problem that my parents won't let me do what I want because the advantage of what I like is that I can draw anywhere <laughs> in anything. So you you can you you can not buy me things uh, to not do art, but uh, my friends, people around me will uh, will provide me those materials, and and you won't stop me. So I think being rebellious, like. But you have to be pretty sure if you you like what you're doing or you you will be liking the things that you were going to do. So in my case, I was very sure. And just because uh, my senora told me that my dreams would change and the thing that I was doing, well, uh, I would not like it in the future. And when she say that, it made me angry and scared at the same time because I didn't know anything else but art or to draw. So I was like, okay, the thing that you're saying is not going to come true. So I will be drawing uh, whatever I want and how many times I want to because it's, it's me, you know, it's my life. So. In the end, I, I yeah, I did not give up and did not listen to uh, the people' opinion, the person. I don't know. Yeah, the the thing is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the thing is that it's kind of hard. And when you become parents, you're gonna understand. It's kind of hard for parents to understand that their kids need to live their own lives and make their own mistakes. It's really hard for parents to understand it because parents make it about themselves. And, and, and uh, there's a case of a, there's this boy who wanted to study something that was not too glamorous. And the mom said, and what should I tell my friends when they ask? And it's a common behavior. Uh, parents make it all about them because they want to look good and they want to seem like they were good parents. And they think that if you don't study something glamorous, you're making them look bad. But if that is really your dream, I would tell you, insist, insist, insist. Make sure it's your dream. Make sure it's just not something for the moment. Make sure it's something that you, your heart deeply desires because it doesn't make sense to just you know, fight with everybody and then you didn't even want that to begin with. So make sure, first of all, it's your deep desire. Make sure that you have the talent to do it. Because I could, I wanted to be a gymnast, but I knew it wasn't going to happen because I don't like to be flipping nowhere 
or not being able to see the ground. So no, it wasn't a deep desire. It was just a wish. So make sure you're able to distinguish between what is your deep desire, the stuff that you're good at, and what's just a wish. And if your deep desire, for instance, is to make movies, then do it. Start now. Take up your cell phone and make movies. Make the little silly documentaries. Start publishing them. Get a YouTube channel. Do it, you know, and get better at it and, and get so good at it that nobody can ignore you, that everybody's got to admit, like, you know, she's kind of good at it. We should probably just, you know, back off because that's how you prove to others and to yourself, more importantly, that you are really serious about those dreams. There was a time in my life when I thought I wanted to be a nurse and I would actually tell people, oh, I want to be a nurse. I don't want to be no nurse. I don't want to be seeing nobody's blood and changing no adult person's diaper. But at that moment, that's what I thought. But I had to sit down with myself and realize like, no, this, I don't really want this. I don't want nobody to be touching nobody's pee. I don't want that. So make sure your first step is that you really know that this is your heart's desire and that you're really good at it. And then you start working on it from now. We have this habit in society that we think that our career begins when we start going to college. No, your career begins now because now is when you start figuring out if you're really good at this thing that you want. And if this is something that you, you can really do, not for the rest of your life, because you are allowed to change your mind, but just do it because it's your deep desire. I once spoke to a man whose biggest dream was to become a veterinarian, and he did not because his parents didn't have the money. So he studied administración de empresas or something, and he was selling computers somewhere or something. But he still had this deep desire to be a veterinarian. And so I told him, you know what you can do? Start by taking care of animals. Start by walking animals or babysitting people's animals. Start by grooming animals. So that even though you did not, you were not able to become a veterinar veterinarian, you can still have that contact with animals and it's gonna help you feel like, okay, so I didn't get all the way to, the, to becoming a doctor, but I got close because I'm still working with animals. Okay, and when he started doing that, he started feeling a lot better about himself. So if it comes to the point where you cannot fulfill your heart's desire because you have zero support or because they convinced you otherwise, don't be afraid of still including some of that in your life. So the kid who became a doctor because his mom thought it was better and he still wanted to, to design movie sets, my advice to him was, okay, finish your medicine, do all of that. But when you have a few spare moments, still work on your dream. You know, like design a set for something. And even if it's just for you to take pictures, still work on your dream because that's what's going to keep you out of falling into depression. Okay. So reason number two for Fidel's becoming a prostitute. When she wanted, when she had these big dreams for herself, she got zero support. And because of the country that she lived in, she was not able to fulfill those dreams. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to become a prostitute. That's a whole different thing. But as we're going to see, and if we look around in real life, a lot of times people just end up living lives that they did not plan for because of these tiny little big glitches that they met along the way. And in her case, that was another one, zero support from the family. They did not even show up to her graduation. So they showed her with that, that they were not interested in her. And um, make sure you have read up to that part and uh, so we can continue our discussion. So people, uh, some of you did not turn in module one. What's up with that? Work on it. Make sure you do from module two onward um, and um, read the book. It's a good book. It's going to make you think, and it's going to make you lose a lot of your judgment for people who live differently or who live in other countries and makes weird decisions that you might not understand. Okay. Do you have any questions? 
Let me see your hands. Who's reading the book? Nobody's reading the book. One hand, two hand, one hand. Oh my goodness. Read the book, people, start in chapter two. Read the book. Otherwise, you're going to just have to make up all your answers, and that's never a good idea. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.